We're gonna go three, two, one. God, <laughs> six! Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, that's not pleasant. <laughs> no. You probably have noticed EV brands love talking about zero to 60 times. They always get so into performance, even on vehicles that most people wouldn't care about performance about. I mean, Tesla, of course, is super well known for this with their plaid powertrains. Even though from experience, I can tell you the Model 3 performance is absurdly quick and probably can accelerate most of you much faster than you'd ever want to go. And yet Tesla still wants to spend a lot of time and resources it appears on triple motor systems and then you got Rivian who's making you know seven seater family camping EVs faster than most performance combustion engine vehicles with zero to 60 times under three seconds now with tri motor systems and quad motor systems on pickup trucks you know and that may bring a lot of questions from you guys like why do EV brands care so much about high performance and quick acceleration and I've seen this in the comments many many times over the years so I figured hey we should probably acknowledge this answer. Why don't companies just make slower EVs that don't necessarily have great 0-60 to 60 times, but perhaps are more efficient or substantially more affordable? Because I think most of us would agree that's the main barrier to entry with electric vehicles. People don't like how much they cost, and it's not so much about their acceleration, right? But the truth is, I think the main reason a lot of EV companies out there are prioritizing 0-60 to 60 is it's one of the most easiest and cost-effective ways to justify charging more for your product. So you'll notice this across all kinds of different lineups. Lucid is another great example. So they're trying to make their vehicles more affordable, of course, and you can get the Lucid Air Pure now for even cheaper than a Model S, and that just has one motor. But while reusing a lot of their same assembly lines and parts and know-how about designing that cheaper Lucid Air Pure, they can easily tweak a few things that doesn't cost them all that much, put in a triple motor system, and now, because it has these insane 0 to 60 times and the Lucid Air Sapphire is capable of smoking a Model S Plaid, Lucid is able to, at least for some out there, justify a quarter of a million dollars for that vehicle, even though a lot of the design and under the hood components of that vehicle are likely shared with the Lucid Air Pure, which is $70,000. Think about how much more money and how much more profit they're able to lock in just by adding a couple motors and of course tweaking the battery pack design optimizing the arrow a little bit and particularly when you're a publicly traded EV company and you're trying to secure better and better profit margins which is important to investors like how much money are you making on these vehicles the fast accelerating ones are very very easy to charge more for because they know at least in the combustion engine space you typically have to pay a lot of money to get acceleration that fast but thankfully the electric motor doesn't require a transmission doesn't need a gearbox it's able to just accept a huge huge amount of current from the battery pack, which most EVs already have, pretty big ones. So assuming you just have the electric motors to output all of that power very quickly, it doesn't cost Rivian or Tesla really that much at the end of the day to beef up their powertrains a little bit and get substantially faster 0-60s, to 60s, and that means they can charge a lot more for those vehicles, therefore improving their average selling price, which definitely looks good for investors. And I think Tesla and Rivian, despite all of the differences between the size Cybertruck and the R1T feels like completely different executions of design. They actually do have some similarities in this regard. Troy Teslike noticed from registration data that Tesla was able to report that the Cybertruck was profitable in the third quarter of last year, partly because they were holding up deliveries of the Cyber Beast. So they were building the dual motor Cybertruck, which is of course lower price and therefore lower margins on that vehicle for the first couple quarters. But in Q3, they finally built a huge bag batch of cyber beasts, which of course are like $20,000 more, and delivered those at very, very high volume all in that third quarter. So the average selling price of the Cybertruck went up, even though the manufacturing cost probably didn't change all that much. Especially from the interior and the exterior, there's very, very little differences between the Cyber Beast and the all-wheel drive. It doesn't cost Tesla that much more to put in a tri-motor instead of a dual motor and add a little Alcantara on the dash. That's pretty much the only interior noticeable difference with the Cyber 
for Beast, and of course some little etching on the back. It's pretty subtle for Tesla, probably only cost them about five grand more to build a Cyber Beast, but if they're charging 20,000 more for it, then you're able to make really, really impressive claims that I'll admit even impressed me, that like the Cybertruck within its first year of production was able to become profitable, but again, that mostly comes down to holding off on performance deliveries and then delivering all of them at the same time. And I think there's a very real chance, even though we haven't had Rivian's earnings report yet, they may be doing something similar with the Generation 2 R1 products because they've held off on delivering the Trimax for quite some time, which is of course not only a triple motor powertrain configuration, but also a much larger battery pack. So Rivian charges much, much more for those Trimax products and with Quad Max right around the corner now. And so they hold off on delivering those until they can deliver a ton of them all at once because the people who have been waiting for those Trimaxes are ready to probably pay cash and pay top dollar because they'll spec them out a little bit more. If you're willing to pay that much for the big battery and the triple motor system, you're probably going to get the nicer tires, the nicer interior, or more accessories. So they save it for those end of year kind of delivery quarter pushes and they can deliver them all at once. And therefore that might be how Rivian is able to justify or unlock that, hey, we were gross profitable in this quarter because we delivered a crap ton of our premium product all at once. And I'm not trying to say this is like a trick or this is a bad thing to do. I understand completely why companies do it because investors need to see some kind of sign of progress or some sign that like, yes, we're getting a lot of people to pay top dollar for this one of our products. Because I'll even admit the company I work for, Telotrucks, has got an insane amount of horsepower for a very, very small vehicle. But the truth is, I can tell you from conversations I've had with my bosses about the powertrain cost that you really can't save all that much by going with a slower, cheaper motor. So a lot of the time it's like, why bother? You know, a lot of people are going to expect this vehicle to be capable of highway speed. And if you're driving out on those long interstates in the central US, people are going to expect this EV to be capable of going 85, 90 miles per hour easily. If you told people the top speed was 75, that would actually be a concern to many of Americans. So in order to get an electric vehicle powertrain capable of going that fast anyway, it also just happens to be pretty quick at accelerating because there's no transmission, there's no gearbox. So as long as you've got a big battery pack, it's actually pretty simple to get a lot of horsepower and a great zero to 60 time out of any EV. And that's why a lot of companies will lean into those advantages because at least in comparisons and product pages, it makes it sound pretty good on paper at least to be like, hey, our truck can go way, way faster than any other gas pickup truck could in this price range. And that helps justify the higher price. That's why Tesla leans so heavily into performance and Lucid and Rivian. You know, they can also see that justification of, well, there's a lot of people in the performance industry willing to pay top dollar. So we might as well cater towards them because EV motors are just generally good at that. And I just hope there's not this narrative out there that, well, if we just had slower EVs that had a zero to 60 time of eight seconds, they would be half the price. No, the motor is not a huge chunk of the vehicle price. And it really doesn't cost the company that much more to throw in an additional motor or two and get some mind boggling zero to 60 times, which puts them in more record books and gets more people talking about them. Because it's pretty nutty to me that the Tello truck, the one they're building right now that I'll get to show you guys, hopefully in the not too distant future, is going to have 500 horsepower and fit in the form factor of a two door Mini Cooper. It's pretty nuts. It's going to be fun to rip around the track in and I can't wait to share more, but hopefully that's a good explanation to some of you why EV companies care so much about acceleration. Let me know if there's other questions that you feel like aren't being talked enough about in the EV YouTube community down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.